IPv6 represents the direction for the future network evolution. SRV6, as an important IPv6 technology, has been widely recognized in industry. For the electric power industry, Huawei provides a solution that uses SRV6 and network slicing technologies to carry teleprotection services. In this video, we will learn about the application of teleprotection service C3794 and its basic configuration and test the methods when the service is carried over SRV6. Teleprotection is the first line of defense for the power system, helping it to isolate 40 components quickly and correctly. Depending on its working principle, the transmission line protection can be classified into overcurrent protection or pilot protection. For overcurrent protection, there is no requirement on communication, but for pilot protection, two terminal ends need to be connected vertically through a communication channel to transmit local electrical information for comparison. Pilot protection is further classified into distance protection and differential protection. Distance protection collects the voltage and the current locally, calculates the line impedance, determines the protection range, and transmits the logical judgment result, which is a Boolean value, to the peer end through the communication channel for line protection. Differential protection compares the current value collected by the local end with that sent from the remote end. If the current difference exceeds the preset value, it triggers a protection action. Protection relays usually use 2 megabits per second or 64 kbps per second interfaces, such as C3794 and Cordier 64K. The interfaces of the router connected to the protection relays must also comply with these standards. For differential protection, the information transmission delay of the terminals at both ends must be less than 5 milliseconds. In addition, the bidirectional delay variation must be within a proper range. This page focuses on the C3794 interface. A C3794 interface is a standard protocol interface that complies with the I3E regulations. It is an optical fiber interface between the protection relays and the digital multiplexing equipment and provides 2 megabits per second bandwidth. Using optical fiber channels to transmit teleprotection information reduces the signal transmission delay and avoids the possible interference in the switching process. Now, we will introduce how to deploy and test the C3794 service over SRV6. The figure shows a basic network deployment. First, deploy FlexE network slicing on the entire network. FlexE provides channelized hardware isolation on physical interfaces to implement hard slicing for SLA assurance. By doing so, it provides exclusive bandwidth for services. It also allows you to configure flexible interface rates. Then, deploy SRV6 configurations. This involves configuring SRV6 seed addresses using them to define a primary path and a backup path, creating an SRV6T policy and recursing it to a network slice. After performing these configurations, you can establish an end-to-end -end bidirectional SRV6 tunnel. Now, let's look at how to connect cables and configure service interfaces on the access side. Huawei uses the 4-channel C3794 optical interface and the 4-channel Cordier 64 electrical interface board. The C3794 interface on the board is a 2 mega optical interface. Protection relays have two types of ports. Depending on the port type, LC to LC optical fibers or LC to ST optical fibers can be used for connection. The connected C3794 interface is the serial interface. The specific configurations are as follows. 
Configure a remote LDP session on the PEs. Configure the TDM link protocol on the serial interface. Configure a static PWE3 service and select the created SRV6T policy as the service eternal. You can use a PW template to flexibly configure PW attributes, including the control word and the jet buffer parameters. This slide shows the test procedure and expected test results. Connect the devices according to the topology shown in the figure. Verify the configuration based on the actual operation command lines and the meter results. First, deploy three slides for all devices. Slice 0 is the default slice, and slice 1 and slice 2 are service slices. Then, configure IPv4 and IPv6 addresses on the base slice interface. You do not need to configure IP addresses on other slices. Deploy SS to ensure reachable routes on the entire network. IPv4 and IPv6 route information can be queried on the device. Activate the MPRS air to VPN function on Duty 1 and Duty 2. An LDP session is set up between Duty 1 and Duty 2. The session status is up for Duty 1 and Duty 2. Activate SRV6. Configure locator information. Define segment list to work as primary and backup pass. Create an SRV6 terminal and recurse the terminal to network slice 1. Check the SRV6T policy status on duty 1. The primary and the backup paths of the terminal are up and bound to network slice 1. SPFD is used to quickly detect pass faults. And the host standby is used to quickly switch traffic to the backup path if the primary path fails. The same results are displayed on DUT2. Next, enter the C3794 interface view, configure an end-to-end -end PWE3 service and bind the service to the SRV60 policy. Check the static PWE3 status on DUT1 and DUT2. PW state is up. Differential protection for teleprotection services has strict requirements on network delay, which must be consistent in the transmit and the receive directions. To meet this requirement, delay compensation can be configured on the devices connected to protection relays. After the configuration, devices that function as egresses compensate for the delay variation caused by intermediate network transmission. To deploy the compensation function, ensure that the PTP clocks of the devices are synchronized. Block the involved AC interface and run commands to enable the device to measure the current network delay as a reference for determining the compensation value.
check the statics on the C3794 interface on Duty 1 and Duty 2. No error package or packet loss is found. Then, check the survey's running status using the XGenius Low Speed Tester. The tester can successfully send service traffic, as well as calculate the transmission delay in two directions and the bidirectional delay variation. The delay meets the requirements of teleprotection services. Shut down the interface to simulate a primary path failure. Traffic is switched to the backup path, which transmits the traffic normally. The switch over time can be seen on the meter, and it meets the requirement. That's all for the video. Thank you for watching.